perro, el perro es mi corazón. El gato, el gato es mi corazón. Cilantro muy famoso. I try. Are you going to continue that? D does the song go on? I'm thinking. I mean, I might need to drop an album. Maybe a duo? We, uh, uh, do you rap? Uh, no. Mike Cabongo does. You may have better success with that. I've actually seen his rap. I wouldn't have better success. Okay, good. I wanted to say that, but since you said it first, I agree with you. Sorry, Mike Cabongo. This is Imani McGee Stafford, everybody. True freshman here for the Texas basketball program. I know there's a backstory with that song now as we learn your personality a little bit more. You were telling me that was not an original production on your no, part. No, I watch American Dad a lot, and that was the episode that was on the night before. Okay. And every day I come to practice and I'm singing some annoying song. Really? Now, how do your teammates feel about those annoying songs? They actually were telling me to shut up in the background of that video. Are you serious? And how do you feel about that treatment? Is it because you're a freshman or perhaps because you're from California? I think it's just because I'm the youngest. I have been coined Big Baby, so. Big Baby? Yes. Do you like that nickname? You know, I think it works. I was a baby for Halloween. So. Okay. And you would have been a big baby. Exactly. It all makes sense right now. So we're talking a little bit about your adjustment with your teammates going from California. Here's a true freshman with Texas. As far as your adjustment on the court, going from high school to now major D1 basketball, what's been the biggest change for you in your game? Um, physicality. I was never really a five in high school. I was lucky to play the four. So Really? Yes. My high school, we were like state champions, so we had like kind of an all-star team. The five was 6'2", kind of hefty, bigger than me. <laughs> You know, so I just got to run, trail, get a couple shots in, rebound. That was my job. So now I have to bang with people, so it's a bit different. So what was your wake-up call to the physicality? When did you know, okay, this is going to be a little bit different? Pick up in the summer. Um, <laughs> Who was it? It was NECA. She actually elbowed me midair in the throat. <laughs> So I think that was my wake-up call. But she looks so nice and so sweet. Does it's she... all of a side. Really? Naka is a beast on the court. So, okay, so we're getting down to all this. Does Coach Aston know this, by the way? She loves it. Okay. So that tenacity comes from the coach. Yes. Now, I know there's also some strong connections from you, even though you're from California, as far as your ties to the program. Because mom and aunt went to USC, but what's your connection to the University of Texas? Um, my cousin is Annette Smith Knight, and... She, obviously, is a big part of Texas women's basketball, so there's a lot of history there. How big of a factor was that when you tried to figure out where you were going to play college basketball? Um, my family's biggest worries were just me going away and not having any type of family here. Because college is like a really trying time, especially your freshman year, so you want to have somebody to lean on. And Annette was right there, so they, that, she helped me get out of California, basically. <laughs> So, when it comes to family, you also have your brother, JaVale McGee, mm -hmm. one of the stars off the bench for the Denver Nuggets. Athletic, always very, very entertaining on the court as well. I know there was a little controversy, though, because we see his performance here from Sunday night. He's got a team high 19 points. You're playing the Tennessee Volunteers, and I want you to watch closely here, because as JaVale is doing his thing, look who's in attendance and cheering him on. Hmm. Would that be? That is my mother. So. But you got to match up with the Tennessee Volunteers and Austin. How does that work out where mom goes? Well, in high school, I always won the battle. Tennessee, anything. It didn't matter. I'm winning. In high school, playoffs, she's out there sitting in the stands cheering. It doesn't matter who we're playing. But now in college, I'm losing. I have lost most of the battles. <laughs> she came to our first game, and she was deciding whether to come yesterday. And luckily, yeah, evidently. she chose the best game. Now, apparently. did she tell you she was there or just try to play it off? Like, oh, no, I, I just decided not to see well, anybody Well, in the morning, play. I was like, everybody watch my game. My brother's like, I'm warming up. My mother's like, I'm going to your brother's game. <laughs> so, <laughs> What's your relationship like with JaVel as far as how you perhaps bounce ideas and tips off of each other as far as your process and your career here in Texas? Um, well, before I really started playing basketball, like seriously, I used to always critique his games when he was in college. I would watch it whenever I could, and I would call him or text him, and that was our thing. And he really, after a while, he was like, Mom, she really knows what she's talking about. Make her play. <laughs> so I guess that's really just the thing. And I always send him my stats, him and my mom. I watch all of his games, and if he can catch mine, I try to send him film, stuff like that. So, so when did you start playing the game of basketball? Seriously, about freshman year. What sparked your interest in that? Was it because of JaVel just kind of pushing you in that direction? Um, my whole family obviously plays basketball, and I've been around it my whole life. I've always watched it. Then how'd you stay away from it? How about that? I was a theater kid. 
Really? Yes, I sang. I was in all the plays. I was smart. I'm the smart one. My brother's the athletic one. Okay. Uh, we'll see how Javel feels about that. That's what we need to do. <laughs> we need to get him on the phone sometime. Now, as far as theatrics, I know, you know, there's a lot to do with performance makeup and how you look when you go on the stage and you perform. And I know the hair recently has been part of the center of that. What are the different phases with the hair of Imani McGee Stafford that you're going through right now? Because I, I think you were channeling, weren't you saying a little other NBA player with your hair? Yeah, I had a little Vera Jow yesterday. I had the sweatband. I was bringing sweatbands back. I'm thinking about it. Might make it a move. I had the curly hair. Um, right now, my hair's straight, as you can see. Um, and I had twists before that. So we're trying to find a happy medium. My family is not a fan of the Vera Jow look. No, they're not. Yeah. Are they a fan of the nails, though? Before we let Imani go, let's just get the nails because I just could not help but observing you've got the black ones and there's just one red one on each hand. What's going on with that? Well, in high school, I wanted all black nails, and my father said that was morbid. He was like, you can't get all black nails. He's a pastor, so you know. And so I decided to get one nail that was a different color, and he would be okay with it. So normally it's hot pink, so I try to like vary the colors, and today it was holiday red, because it's the holidays. The holidays, so black and then red. Yes. It works out that way. This is going to be a staple right here. Imani McGee Stafford, not just on the court, but here in the Longhorn Network studios. Can we blow it up?